from 200 miles above the earth, we gain a unique perspective of the route the Israelites may have followed out of Egypt to the shores of the Red Sea. It is a route consistent with ancient biblical and historical records. The first century historian Josephus, for example, wrote of a three-week journey through the wilderness, culminating on a beach surrounded by mountains. A beach, according to the Old Testament narrative, that was located outside the borders of 18th Dynasty Egypt. Yet do accounts of the Israelites' travels after crossing through these waters continue to match the geography of this region? If the biblical record is historically viable, then this should be the case. And the Israelites saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. After crossing the Red Sea, the Israelites probably assembled on this 10-mile stretch of beach along the western coast of the Arabian Peninsula. Here they were said to have gathered weapons from the dead soldiers of Pharaoh's army. Remnants of Egyptian chariot wheels discovered in shallow waters just off the shore confirm the validity of this account. Three days after crossing the Red Sea and 30 days after leaving Egypt, the Israelites camped at a place called Elam. The Bible describes Elam's 70 palms and 12 springs. Today, less than 30 miles from the Red Sea, an oasis matching this description still offers refuge to desert travelers. And they journeyed from Elam to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Mount Sinai. After a brief sojourn at Elam, the Israelites followed God's pillars of cloud and fire into the wilderness of Sin. Here, their supply of food, prepared in Egypt a month earlier, was finally exhausted. Once again, Moses called out to God for deliverance. The Lord answered the next morning by covering the ground with manna, a bread-like substance. This food from heaven would sustain Israel for the next 40 years. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water to drink. Nearly a month after crossing the Red Sea, Israel reached the plains of Rephidim. Desperate for water, Moses again looked to God for a miracle. God commanded him to strike a rock in the desert with his staff. He split the rock in the wilderness and gave them abundant drink. Today, a rock six stories high and split from top to bottom still rises from the sands of Rephidim. Its base reveals signs of water erosion, a rare sight in a desert that often receives less than an inch of annual rainfall. While at Rephidim, the Israelites were attacked by the Amalekite army. When Moses raised his hands, his people, armed with Egyptian weapons they had gathered at the Red Sea, were empowered to defeat their enemy. After their victory over the Amalekites, the children of Israel moved east to Mount Sinai. They quickly set up camp on this enormous plain at the base of the mountain. Here they would spend the next nine months. Several geographic and archaeological features of this area match the biblical and historical accounts of the Exodus story. Acacia trees grow around the mountain. The scriptures indicate that on Mount Sinai, God commanded Moses to use acacia wood covered with gold to build the Ark of the Covenant, the sign of the Lord's presence among his people. The peak of the mountain is blackened, as if scorched by an inferno. This feature is consistent with the biblical record, for God is said to have descended upon it with the fire and smoke of a furnace. An enormous pile of rock stands between the mountain and the place of the Israelites' encampment. 
Etched into the stones, these ancient inscriptions of cattle and bulls are of both historical and biblical significance. They resemble the ancient Egyptian bull god Apis. But why would images of this ancient cult appear so far from Egypt? Some have speculated they may have been drawn upon an altar of stone when the Israelites built and worshiped a golden calf, a supreme act of disobedience against God and his commandments. An ancient altar, an oasis, an acacia tree, Individually, their significance can be overlooked. Yet when considered collectively, each is a piece of evidence that links this remote corner of the Arabian Peninsula to the biblical accounts of Israel's epic journey to the mountain of God.